and welcome again. Here we are again. Feel like we've done this before. I hope you really enjoyed that song, Are You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb? That was taken from a Songs of Praise in the 90s when the Salvation Army was, was featured. And that has really set us off for worship. And I hope you're doing well. This week, I've been reading the book of First Chronicles, which is very interesting. But when we get to chapter 16 of First Chronicles, we get one of the first Psalms that David wrote. And this is uh, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse, starting at verse 8. He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of his wondrous works, glory in his name, let his hearts, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous words that he has done, his miracles and judgments he uttered. O offspring of Israel, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen one, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, he sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed as a statue to Jacob, as an everlasting covenant to Israel, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When you were few in numbers and of little account, the sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, touch not my anointed ones, so do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell he of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glories among the nations, his marvellous works among his the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, for he is to be held in awe above all gods. Amen. So we are going to sing to the Lord we're going to sing all the nations because we are we actually get viewed all, all over the world at the moment. Well done. So if you're watching from overseas, welcome. So we're going to sing a chorus. Yes, a chorus. An oldie but a goodie. I want to sing it. I want to shout it. I want to tell you all about it. The love of Jesus. The love of Jesus. It brings the glory to my soul. Hey, I can't see what you're doing. But if you want to get up and boogie in your jammies, you do it. We're back. 
Now we're going to sing and make music to, from our hearts to the Lord. Give thanks to God for everything. Again, I can't see you. We're going to come before the Lord now. And I found this beautiful uh, modern arrangement of a beautiful song in our songbook. I bring my all to Jesus. And however you're feeling about this lockdown at the moment, and I have, <laughs> I know we're only in a few days in, but I have, I've had good days. I've had bad days. I woke up Friday very, very uh, depressed. I woke up really bad on Friday, really down about it. and. I had to bring it all to Jesus. I had to just trust him. And so as we enter into this time, just listen to the just listen to the music. The words are going to be on the screen. But I bring my all to Jesus. My hopes and my dreams. And that's what we want to do today. Bring our all to Jesus.
Father God, we lift up your name today. We come to you where we are. And we're so grateful, Father, that you can come exactly where we are and meet our needs. We want to ask a special blessing on those that are in hospital, those that are sick and those that are far from well. Give them a special touch. We want to bring all of our problems and all of our concerns and all of our troubles to you, Lord Jesus. We want to give them to you. We know, Lord, that our burdens are very hard and heavy to bear and we want to leave them at the foot of your cross. Oh, Father God, we just praise you and we thank you. We love you and we want to worship you. We praise you, Lord, that we have technology that we can meet together as a family and share together. Please bless us today, Lord Jesus. Amen. Good morning. And I guess many were like me who seen Joan's message and decided that somebody else would give their testimony. But um, I just spoke to her on the phone and found out nobody has. So I thought maybe this is what God wants me to do today. So here we go. I first came to the Salvation Army um, at about the age of 17 when my sister decided she wanted to go to a night service. And we only lived around the corner. And my mother volunteered me to go with her to escort her, so, which I did. And from there I enjoyed the worship and enjoyed the Salvation Army. It was vibrant, it was exciting. The band and the timbrels were fantastic and it was a great time of worship. So I started to attend uh, regularly. Um, I kept going and I became a senior soldier. I was sworn in by the General um, at, at Congress in Festival Hall and um, there it started, it just became, I then became the, the primary leader, which is uh, the leader of the Sunday School for um, the Littleys up to a year eight and had a lovely time teaching them every Sunday. And um, so then I heard the call for God to become an officer. I did ask him why he'd want me. I'm talented nothing much to offer but all I, I had was myself and so he accepted that and um, I went to college in 70, 1973, completioned in 75 and in uh, 1975 in the August Kings and I were married and there we started our ministry together. I never ever felt called to be a Salvation Army, but God, I'm oh, sorry, never be, felt called to be a, a core officer, not the Salvation Army, never felt called to be a core officer, but God used me in the years uh, we served together. He took me out of my comfort zone, he stretched me, he put me in places I um, never thought I'd be. I have done many things that, with his help, I would never have been able to do. But he challenged me and he kept me. And it was a good time. We, we just, um, he was just my strength and my companion. And he got me through a lot of tough times that things I, could, I would never try, I did over the years. But I must admit when... Um, we were separated in 2004 and Kingsley went his way to his appointment and I went my way uh, to my appointment. Even though it was distressing and, and I hated it to start off with. But the last two appointments I had, I felt really, really comfortable and at home. I felt at last I'd found where I should be. 
and that was in um, the children's court and in the hospital chaplaincy. The children's court, the children's court was a tough one. You had parents coming in crying. You had parents distressed. You had parents losing their anger. You had children who didn't know what was going on. And yet you were there. You were there to support everybody regardless. And not only the the parents and the children, but also the lawyers and the staff that needed our help and our, our assistance at time. So it was it was a good appointment. You got to do dedications. Sadly, you got to do funerals of children who had passed away. But, you know, God used us in that situation. And then in the hospitals, there was another time where, you know, you weren't allowed to talk about God unless people ask you about God. But when they did, you were able to talk about him. But, you know, you were just a presence there. And some of the people I met, you know, a lady whose who's five-year-old son had just been diagnosed with cancer. A lady whose um, baby had been diagnosed with cancer. You were there to comfort them. You were there to support them. And, you know, people came to you and they looked forward to you coming to see them and um, just to talk to you about some of the things. And sometimes you were there just to give the mum a respite while she went and got herself a coffee or she just went for a little walk and you were able to sit there with the child. Two cases come to my mind at the children's hospital. One, I was walking along the corridor and there was a lady sitting there on the seat. looked really, really distraught. So I went over and spoke to her and found out that um, she'd just come out of the ward to pull herself together because when she went back, they were going to turn off his grandson's life support. So I was able to let her talk out her feelings I was able to give her a hug and comfort her and a prayer to just help her through this tough time she was going to go back to it is a time when um, God uses you and when another lady I met in the St Vincent's Hospital who was very anti-Christ when I first started to come and visit her. She still put herself under Salvation Army. So each time I went, I went to visit her. And yet, at the end, she told me that I brought Christ back to her bed when she thought he'd abandoned her. I was able to buy that lady a Bible. And praise the Lord, that lady is still serving God to this day. And, you know, right through our ministry, the words of this chorus is, is the one that came with me. Just where he needs me, my Lord has placed me. Just where he needs me, there would I be. And since he's found me, by love he's bound me to serve him joyfully. And that's exactly what I do in retirement and for the rest of my life is joyful to serve the Lord. May God bless each one of you. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me, and love them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, 
to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Good morning, brother and sister in God. Have you been watching the Olympic? I watched the only a couple of games. I found that it was hard to enjoy. Apparently, it wasn't just me. According to CNN News, the audience declines 35% from previous Olympic Games. There might be uh, many reasons. But in my opinion, I can't enjoy games without the live, loud noise from the audience or friends next to me, cheering up together. It didn't seem a real game, and I can't connect with the players without the, the live action, live noise. I believe that we need a certain trigger or motivation to build a unity. In 2019, there was a research by Catherine Kinsler, a professor of psychology at the University of Chicago. She observed how kids motivate their unity. So, she randomly formed two teams of young kids for a task. She named the, te the teams as Lion and Eagle. And then she asked kids to talk about their team and the other team. The Eagle team said that they are faster and smarter than the other team. The kids in the Lion team were the same. They said that they are stronger and smarter than the Eagle team. The kids were actually randomly chosen so they didn't know each other well from the beginning. But somehow they started comparing each other and believe that they are better than others. Seeing ourselves better than others is one of the easiest strategies that even kids can use for unity. Also, it is a very effective tool. Because believing that they are a part of a superior team makes them feel proud. And it's not that hard to see people using it. For example, Jews always believe that they are the chosen special people. It helps them to keep their pride and their land against Muslim countries around them. Adolf Hitler used this strategy so effectively that Germans believe that they are superior people. He united the whole German quickly. But this strategy comes with cost. Jerusalem seems to be always in the middle of war. Hitler united the whole nation but he tore apart many other nations. My Ethiopian volunteer on Tuesday said that there are several tribes in um, Ethiopia, Ethiopia. They used to have strong unity and even helped other broken countries like Korea in 1950 during Korea War. However, a few politicians started praising their own tribe and despising the others. Then, their unity was broken. Some might say, Australia is lucky we didn't have those problems. But, according to a research in 2012 by University of Western Australia, on average people who fly Australian flags on their cars may seem patriarch, but they have more racist views than 
the rest of the population. Seeing ourselves better than others is easiest and effective strategy to unite ourselves. But it doesn't help us to unite with others. It will tear apart others and at the end ourselves as well because we will start comparing among ourselves to seek for more pride. Last week, Star preached about the importance, our, importance of our unity to show God. But if we use this strategy, we will end up with hating each other and no one is able to see God through our unity. For example, I used to hate Catholic Church because I believe that they only show visual things like Maria and tall buildings but hide Jesus. I used to hate Pentecost Church because I believe that they only show catchy songs but hide the Bible. I used to hate Calvinism because I believe that they only show judgment of God, but hide the mercy of God. I believed the Salvation Army is much better than them, especially in doing good work. However, later I thought that we need to be careful as well because we might show only the good work of Salvation Army, but hide the work of God. It's true that we are good at doing good work, and better than any other church denomination. Our work appeals to people so easily. We are proud of our work, and it helps us to unite it. But we have to be careful because people might not see God through us. We shouldn't use this strategy. We shouldn't see ourselves better than others. We need a different strategy for our unity. In John chapter 17, hours before he died, Jesus prayed that his followers would have unity. And through the example, his life and teachings, he gave us the right strategy for the unity. In verse 22, Jesus said, He gave us glory so we can be one. Then in verse 23, he explained that we have to be united with him first in order to have complete unity with God. The glory refers to the good news, which is we have new sinless life through Jesus. Hallelujah! <laughs> and finally, we have a chance to unite with God completely. This complete unity refers to the stage where we can understand God's will for us completely as if we can read God's thought timely. Does it sound unrealistic? But it's possible. A study published in Proceed National Academy of Science in March 2019 or 18 show that when a couple hold their hands, their brain started synchronizing and pain was reduced and they felt calmer. If you can't believe me, try research certain keywords in YouTube several times. After that, the AI will recommend YouTube videos in advance, as if it reads your thought. The key for understanding other thought is the ongoing interaction. So, in our practice of Christianity, to understand God's thought, we need to cons consistently seek for God's will. For example, be curious about what He wants to say to you 
through your daily devotion or Christian radio station. Hold His word as if you are holding His hand. This simple action will lead to unity. Then, when we have the complete unity with God, we can practice our unity with others as well. If your friend is in pain, hold her or his hand. For a couple, you don't need an excuse to hold the hand. Just do it. Call or send a message to each other. This simple action will lead to unity. It's very easy to put ourselves <clears throat> better than others for our unity. But it won't last long. Even though we are truly better than others in some ways, because we don't show God but our pride, and this strategy will end up pull apart ourselves as well. We need to seek for unity with God first. Jesus already gave us the pathway for it on the cross. So, so we just need to practice ongoing interaction with God so we can read His thought timely. And this is how we reach to complete unity with God that will lead to complete unity with other Christians as well. Let's pray. Dear Father, Your last two will was and is our complete unity. We want to follow your will, but we are easily tempted to complete, compare ourselves and believe that we are better than other Christians. That make us proud and even seem to unite for a while, but we know that that's not the true unity. It will end up with tearing ourselves and others as well. Please help us to seek for the complete unity through the pathway you open to us. Let us seek for your will first and constantly. Let us be curious about your will and uh, close, be close to your word all the time. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Father God, we just thank you for the time that we've had together in worship. Lord, we give this pandemic to you. We give it all to you. We can't control it. But Lord, we know that you, that you are the Lord of all. We know, Lord, that you have this and we give it to you. Please strengthen us and bless us and keep us wholly focused on you during this time. Lord, we know that because you live, we can face tomorrow. We know because you live, all fears are gone because we know you hold the future. And life is worth living just because you live. Father God, I just pray that that is the prayer of everyone today. Thank you for the time that we've had in worship today. And we just look forward to the blessings that you're going to bestow on us in lockdown. Amen. Well, you know, one of the things to do when you're in a dark place is to have light, to shine a light. Guess what? We're going to do that right now. We're going to storm the forts of darkness and we're going to bring them down. When I was a kid, before we do that, when I was a kid, when we used to sing songs like this, sometimes the Holy Spirit would take over and someone would grab the, the good old army flag and we'd march around. We'd march around the, the building, waving our flag. We called it a hallelujah wind up. You know what? Why don't you do a hallelujah wind up at home? Right where you are, hallelujah wind up. Don't have a flag. All you need is a hanky. Hanky, a towel, anything you can wave. I just realised that I, I don't have, didn't prepare. I didn't prepare. So let's do a hallelujah wind up as we storm the forts of darkness and bring them down.
benediction today we're going to listen to charlie green charlie green uh won britain's got talent in 2008 when he was 10 years old at the time he attends the deutwich salvation army in the uk he's the deputy song leader deputy choir master and he's he plays the corner and he's going to share with us the benediction i pray that this week you will feel the immense love and peace that God will bestow on you. May God bless you this week. And I'll catch you again soon. Lord bless us and keep us. May the Shine his light upon us. And may the Lord lift us, turn his face towards us, give us his peace. Give Go. Oh.